Hey guys, Lord of Pontel here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Today in this video it is the fourth in my series of S-Hero Hero Guides and we are going to be looking at the first of the S1 Cav Heroes. So if we're going to recruit and into Super Recruit page as normal. If we look at the list on here, so we've already looked at the three Footman Heroes, Judge, Iron Hand and Chung Mugong which means that we will be looking at Elizabeth the Bulwark today. So let's click into her. I do have Bulwark and um, I've got her um, with two duplicates, which so I've used to unlock her sixth skill, the awakening skill and the eighth skill. Obviously we've got the new uh, hero dynamic screen here and with the extra information, as you can see, she is a cavalry hero, a season hero, and she is a support hero. So she's not purely going to be a killer hero, which means that she's definitely not a back row hero. However, for some reason, the developers have put on the description, this hero excels at supporting allies suitable for leading mid or back row squads. She's not going to go on the back row, and I'll tell you why in about 20 seconds. So as usual, we've got skill one. Dictator, the 23,100 extra marching capacity for the troops in your hero squad. Skill 2, the first of her hero specific skills. Now, Bulwark is, um, each of these S1 heroes are kind of split into three groups of three, um, which include one archer's hero, one footman hero, one um, cavalry hero. And um, Bulwark is, has similar skill set to the Judge. So some of the descriptions that you see here are going to be very similar to what we've already seen in the uh, video that I did on the Judge. So if we go into here, her skill to the Revenge, it's a combat skill. So an offensive skill that's going to cause damage to the enemy. Effective range is only two. And that's why she's definitely not a back row hero. Otherwise, if you put her on the back row, this skill will never hit the enemy so please do not follow the game instructions um, target just the one random enemy squad within effective range so if you put her on the front row that would be the enemy's front row or middle row and if you put her on your middle row this skill would only hit the enemy's front row but that's that's fine um, what have we got here well it's a 40 percent chance to deal scaled levels of damage to that single enemy squad. 40% it's in the middle range um, of the damage of the chances of it happening uh, but the damage percentages are slightly higher uh, to reflect that. If we look in the upgrade preview one thing I'd just like everyone to note is uh, for those of you that are maybe uh, you know not at C25 maybe at your, your accounts are a bit younger than mine You'll notice on your heroes that these skill details show a lower percentage level for the damage. And as you can see, the damage actually for this skill increases by 4% with each hero level. Um, and certain other things can affect your damage as well, uh, the damage as well, such as gear. Um, and also your master warfare research. So there are various things that are going to impact on what the final percentage totals are on these skills, and that those are the various reasons why. So for me, um, on the next level, it's going to give uh, 474 damage. So that's that's a good level of damage. Um, but again, you do have it's it's not a great it's not a very high chance. Uh, as I've said before, with these S1 heroes, a lot of at least one or two of their skills are still chance based then there's no guarantee that they're going to be um, hitting the enemy or activating those skills often during the eight turns of the battle so that is her second skill third and fourth skills nothing new here that you haven't seen already the defensive formation skill which gives up to 50 percent resistance buff um, to the troops in your squad in this case cavalry and the fourth hit the skill is the Offensive Formation 2 skill, so another leadership skill, which is for the troops. And this is going to give 
a buff of up to 50% might. As usual, those these two skills are at a higher level than the normal orange, where you're only going to get about 30%. Um, and that's why one of the reasons, you know, if you can unlock a season hero or eight skills, um, they will they will definitely always be better than their orange equivalent. Her fifth hero specific skill, Flame of Vengeance. Again, it's a combat skill, and this has two elements to it. So first off, the effective range again is two, and it's only going to hit that one random enemy squad, and it's a 40% chance again. So two reasonably low chance skills for Bulwark. But what is she going to do? Well, again, it's going to deal slightly less damage than that uh, skill two to a random enemy squad within the range and this is where it's and then this is where it's similar to um, judges fifth skill where all friendly units will receive a buff of and in this case it ranges up to 60 percent bonus and now again for bulwark because she's a cavalry hero it's cavalry to footman countering bonus damage which will last two turns so you'll get more if your troops counter any damage done to uh, them on a, on two turns then they will uh, have more, they will give more damage to the opponent because of this skill her sixth skill the awakened skill as usual the 250 percent bonus to the other leadership skills so this will by uh, maximizing this sixth skill you will maximize uh, the troop amount in your legion uh, from the bonuses that the hero gives to you. There's only three elements for bulwarks, but the other two are okay. Well, this first one's nice. 20% additional resistance um, for the cavalry troops in the squad. So that's that 20% resistance is a decent buff for an S1 hero. Um, you, you've probably seen before a lot of these uh, buffs were around 10 or 15% for some of the uh, footman here as we reviewed and she is going to give plus 20 cavalry speed on to skill 7 discipline cavalries uh, this is another leadership skill and is uh, as usual with the seventh skill it's applicable to all of the troops in the legion all three squads in the legion and for bulwark she has a might buff for her seventh skill and that is going to give up to 40 percent might Skill 8, Iron Cavalries. It's a prep skill, so this will happen with her in your squads. It's not a chance-based like the other two. And uh, this is an end-of-battle skill. It's going to buff two random friendly squads within the effective range, and the range is two. So you can put her on any line uh, for this to be to this to work but you don't want to put her on your back row because her other two offensive skills are not going to reach. So you definitely do not follow the game advice. You you can put her in a middle row if you're desperate for a middle row um, cavalry S hero, but um, and I do know some people that do have her on the middle row because they just don't have, because of the way that the luck has dealt with the heroes. Um, but otherwise, she she's perfectly fine on a front row and... Uh, for instance, you want to consider later in the game, particularly in Eden, you might be working, running with three cavalry legions. So it's always something to think about. Um, but we'll talk about longevity again, as usual, in a second. So what will this skill do? When all squads in, in the heroes formation are cavalries, on the fifth turn, two random friendly squads receive, and then it does the combat skills damage boost for four turns and this is up to a maximum of 60% combat skill damage boost. So for turns five, six, seven and eight of the battle, so the second half of the battle, um, this will boost the uh, hero skill damage for the other two heroes, well, or for two of the heroes in your squad. Um, so this is gonna help you have a, a stronger finish to the battle, hopefully, uh, particularly than if you're up against uh, another player who's only got normal orange heroes, uh, having ball would definitely be a, a benefit. So those are our eight skills. Um, nothing amazing there, unfortunately. But um, what about longevity? Well, 
already when you get into if you're just looking at it from the point of view of just one strong um legion of cavalry as soon as you get into s2 you have beast queen um as the strongest front row hero for cavalry and you'll have immortal as uh, the immortal on your back row um but if you did have bulwark she would be perfectly acceptable um in the middle row if you haven't developed her then you probably want rogue on your middle row that's if you have beast queen if you pick up beast queen and the immortal of course um if you don't pick up beast queen then then bulwark on the front row for sure when you get into season three uh there are four cavalry heroes available and um Roko is generally a middle row. You would have Warlord front row, and Warlord is much more uh, is a much stronger hero than Bulwark. And then uh, you would have Living Saint on the back row as your killer hero. So if you started running with two Cav legions um, at that point, and you've you've got you know you're a big spender and you're making a lot, then Bulwark would be a good option for you. Where you come a cropper is, um, and this is something to consider. It's like in terms of the middle row. Uh, from S3, you, you will want Rosenblade and Roku on your middle rows over Bulwark. And when you get to S4, um, you then have... His name escapes me. Of course, the Brave. You'll, you'll have the Brave, who um, is a very strong um, cavalry front row hero. And then when you get to SX... We also have uh, the Lawman, who has an unbelievable healing skill, up to 96% of troops. So, and and there are and there's Windwalker as well, who's another ex hero. So you're gonna have actually five cavalry front row heroes that will be stronger than Bulwark, and you're going to have at least three middle row heroes that are stronger than her as well. Uh, cause army breaker can be used middle row and the avalanche can be used middle row. So again, it's just one of those things with those S it, with the S heroes with S one heroes. If you're not a big spender, but you get lucky and you get a, a you get bulwark with a duplicate, she's definitely worth having in potentially either, you know, your first or second cavalry legion. If you're a big spender in the game, you're probably going to dispense with her by, the end of S3 because you would pick up um, you would pick up the Brave in S4 and you're going to have Warlord and you're going to have um, Beast Queen in, in your cavalry squads and that's even if you were running with three cavalry squads um, for those big spenders because you might have three because you've got the Defensive Legion unlocked from Master Research. So she's probably not, for, for those of us though as, is, as I've said, for me even though my um, my account is very cavalry heavy from the hero point of view and I quite often do run with three cavalry legions. Um, I've got her in my third cavalry legion and um, and she'll probably end up staying there, uh, to be honest with you, either on the front or middle row. So um, she, she is a useful hero and she's one of the better ones. I, I For me, I, I rate her higher than Ebony Knight. Um, but that that's just that's my point of view, um, and we'll be so next up on the list will be. Is it going to be Lionheart? I think it is. Yeah. So we'll be reviewing Lionheart next time, um, which I'll be doing in, in a day or two. So that's everything for the video today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you're enjoying these hero guides. And as I said before, I will be working through them as quickly as possible to get all of them on the channel so that everyone can take advantage of them, no matter what stage of the game you're in. Um, I have a bit more time in real life to do a few more videos in the next 48 hours. So I will be doing um, at least uh, an Eden uh, video and uh, one on the blacksmith and gear because I know that's uh, two topics that people are really desperate to hear about. Um, so it, please do expect those on the channel soon. And tomorrow it is Hero Recruitment Day as well and I'll be trying to finish 
getting my fourth attempt at an S, S hero this week and hopefully I will finally get that warlord duplicate that I need to finish him off for my class legion so we'll just well I'll be praying to the recruitment gods tonight let's put it that way so thank you very much for watching guys uh, please don't forget to subscribe ring that bell uh, like share my channel in the game and on your socials and of course please place any comments that you have in the section below and I will see you soon